If you can hear me, type the number four. If you can hear me, type the number four. Oh, sweet. Okay, cool. Oh, I didn't even know people were on. Okay. All right, cool. So at least there's a few people on. Um, sorry about that. Thank you, Nuvia, for telling me um, about that. But yeah, what uh, what do you guys need help with? How can I help? I'm ready to go if you guys are. And again, we might be trying different angles with this board. It's not where I wanted to do this, but this is where we're at. So it'll be okay. Yeah, just let me know what questions you have and we can get started. And let people know that this seems to be working. I, I know how what I did wrong. I copy and pasted the wrong link on the first one. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's talk about that. Okay. So the very first thing with this one, and again, this, let me know if you can't see this black, let me know and I can try to figure something else out. Um, we have to be careful with these words. And that is atom, isotope, and ion. Uh, again, can you guys see that? Do I need to go bigger? Sorry, some of this is gonna be problem solving a little bit. I haven't done the YouTube kind of thing in like three, four years. It's gotten a lot better though, so that's a cool thing. Okay, cool. Um, so really what it comes down to is with these words, right? We just gotta really be able to tell the difference. An atom is neutral. Okay, uh, all, all that means is the protons are gonna equal the electrons. An isotope um, has a different mass, and it has a different mass because the atomic mass is different than normal. An ion is a charged atom. Again, cation and anion. Cation positive, anion negative. Um, so with this, really the key thing is, you know, can you keep these two apart? Okay, these are the two that people flip sometimes. Um, an isotope is going to have a different mass. So again, the neutrons are different. So with this, so with this, right, um, with an isotope. The neutrons change, again, up or down. And then with an ion, the electrons change, again, up or down. Uh, protons never change. So when looking at that table, all you really need to do is look at, are the electrons the same or different? What's going on? And then is the mass different than what it is on the periodic table? That's the key with this. All this is under unit two. Um, and this is a really, really cool thing uh, when we start talking about charges and things later on. But yeah, definitely the key is these two words together, Moises. Definitely the key. Again, do you, um, Moises, do you want me to... Um, like put a box up, kind of like a chart like we did in class, or is this good enough? I can I can make a few problems like that. 
Yeah, ion masses will be the same. Yeah. Um, but it, it is possible to be both at the same time, but that's pretty rare. Um, so yeah, when it's going to be an isotope, the mass is what's different. Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay, no problem, no problem. What else can I do? Looks like there's a few more people here. So welcome everybody. Again, um, if anyone's having issues, you know, let me know, see where we're going. I'm trying to check my, um, try and check my Twitter. I need to probably pull up my email, check if anybody's trying to email me. Yes, yes, we can do that. We can do that. Let me erase for a second. And can, how's the volume? Can you guys hear me okay with the volume? Am I too soft, too loud? Before I start, am I like screaming at you guys? Hopefully, I'm not. <laughs> Good. Yeah, just let me know if something's up. Because I don't know if I do this, if it gets higher. And I don't know if this, if it slowly gets lower. So I don't know. Um, yeah, that, did that do anything, what I just did? Did the volume just fluctuate a lot? Okay, cool. I just want to make sure my volume control doesn't do it. Okay, cool. All right, so cool. So with the three particles, three particles are alpha, beta, and gamma. Alpha particles, as we talked about, 4, 2, beta, 0, negative 1, gamma, pure energy, pure energy, um, and the it's going to have a mass and atomic number, obviously, of zero. So the cool thing is here, right, if we're talking about power, okay, we are talking about how strong they are. If we're talking about the mass, and if we're talking about the size, okay, we are able to rank these things. Um, the cool part about it is, uh, what's the strongest one going to be? What's strongest? Alpha, beta, or gamma? Yep, gamma. So gamma is going to be the strongest. Which one's weak? Which one's weak? Is beta weak or is alpha weak? Good. Seeing if I can get one more person to say it. Yeah, alpha is the weakest. Good. Where's the strength there? And beta is kind of in the middle. And the reason for this really kind of comes down to the size. Alpha is huge. Alpha, it being a helium nucleus, kind of has two protons, two electrons. This is just straight up energy. So it doesn't really technically have a size. So I'm just going to say it's tiny. And then being just an electron, beta, again, is in the middle. And what happens is because this is so big, it really can't penetrate anything. It's not; It doesn't have enough strength. Gamma being so kind of tiny and being energy, it can just zoom right through things. Um, so again, if you had something like this, you know, alpha would be stopped with paper. 
theta will go all the way to plastic, and gamma is all the way out here with lead. By far the strongest. By far the strongest. And to be honest with you, probably should do a little of this because it's energy, a little bit of a wave. Um, but that's really what it comes down to. Again, it's think about the Hulk, right? I've said that a few times. It's going to be a really strong one right here. And the mass, you guys already know, mass of that is four, two protons, the other two neutrons, beta, zero, electrons don't have a mass, energy. Energy doesn't have mass either. So this is really the chart uh, that I was talking about in that problem. Did, um, did that help, Nubia? Awesome, awesome. Yeah, we can do a decay. Yeah. Um, can I erase this? If you if you need, uh, take a picture really quick. Uh, what up? Uh, ceiling fan. There's a ceiling fan. All right, I'm going to erase it in three, two, one. Yeah, having a phone out for a quick picture, just in case I do erase it fast, you know, let me know. Again, I will post this video, so if you ever need it, uh, we can go from there. And I'm going to see if I can timestamp it in the comments and be like, hey, 13 minutes, we're going to do an example and kind of break that up, okay? Um, so we'll kind of go from there. Uh, let's do an alpha and a beta, okay? We'll do uh, same kind of thing, one alpha, one beta, and then we'll do a gamma. Um, we'll start out with your uh, thorium. We'll go thorium. Guys, we've done a lot of uranium. We'll say 250. And we'll do it for all three. Again, decay is always when it breaks down. So here, alpha, beta, gamma. And of course, we're trying to figure out, right, what's left over. And with this decay, it's always going to be subtraction. Always subtract. Okay, always. Okay, always do that. Again, I have no clue if that green's going to show up. I don't think it's showing up. Purple. Okay, always subtract. Okay, always, 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 always subtract. Because when you decay, you get smaller. Okay, I don't want to actually anyone growing these things. That's bad news. So with these, um, your subtraction, 250 minus 4 is going to be 246. 90 minus 2 is 88. And element 88, unless I am crazy, should be radium. I'm just going to check that. Off the top of my head, because I do not have a periodic table in front of me. Apologize, I definitely should have done that. Oop, come on. So give me a use to my new computer, obviously. I'm sorry. Should be radium. I know you guys I'm not on the YouTube. You guys have probably already told me it is. Yeah, it is. Okay, cool. Excellent. So I was actually going to talk about that, Jesus, in, uh, in a second. It is energy. Um, let me get to that one next. Uh, beta, same kind of thing, 250, right? 90 minus negative 1 is 91. It is subtraction. It is subtraction. That's 91. 91 is protactinium. And this one. So with this energy one, normally what you'll see because we really haven't had any, is you'll see this little star. And that little star tells you that the molecule is unstable, it's radioactive. One thing the molecules can do when they're freaking out with size. Okay, and again, if you didn't watch the video, 
uh, uranium tissue and Dagon's tail, you probably don't um, have familiarity with this. Um, but one of the things that it can do is it not only can break apart in terms of particles, it can also do an energy release. I compare it like this, okay? You can imagine like a little kid being upset about ice cream, right? Let's say they were supposed to get an ice cream cone, they didn't. They could literally start throwing stuff, okay? Getting angry, throwing things around. They can throw big things and they can throw small things, okay? And if they, you know, do this, they have less stuff with them. You know, if I decide I'm an angry little kid, I'm going to throw my hat. I'm an angry little kid, I'm going to throw, you know, my glove, okay? A hat's bigger than a glove normally. And, and it can get smaller, okay? Or if you're sick and over eight, you know, you can throw up a lot or a little. But sometimes when you're not feeling good, all you need to do is let out a good scream. When you let out a scream, right, you're naturally feeling better sometimes, okay? But a scream isn't going to lose your mass. A scream isn't matter. So I compare that to kind of the molecule screaming and releasing some of that radiation. And when it releases that radiation, what normally happens is it's not radioactive anymore. It released that energy. Um, again, not crazy important for what we're talking about this class, obviously. Um, but I do kind of think it's a good question and why we do have this. It's an energy release. These two aren't energy releases. So it is cool to know. And normally you see notated with the star, and then it goes away. Important thing is, though, the math, it's no different because it's energy. It can show it can show the energy really. So get a question essentially, um, to your question is getting at um, this energy release. So it shows an energy release. These don't show that. Yeah, depending on the element, yes. Depending on the element, yes. Some elements can withstand having that energy better than others. Okay, one of the reasons why uranium is really good for um, our nuclear power plants and stuff is because uranium can handle it. Other ones that we have right now are man-made. If you look, uranium is the last element that's not man-made on the periodic table. 92 is the last one. All the other, you know, 26 or so, those are all man-made. Yeah, the important thing with gamma is that it's energy. Oh, no problem. It's a good question. Because, yeah, you're right. Like, why are we doing this if it's no math change? Because it does show energy. And that's a good thing. What else can I do? What else can I do? Yes. I want to erase this in about five seconds. Three, two, one. Okay, so with the states of matter, um, definitely, definitely, definitely need that solubility chart out, okay? Definitely need that solubility chart out. Um, what it comes down to really is with elements, right? Okay, look at the periodic table, okay? Seriously, look at the periodic table. If it's red, it's a gas. If it's black, it's a solid. If it's white, it's a solid. If it's blue, which are only two of them, that's going to be a liquid. Okay, so for elements, just look at the periodic table, not a big deal. The compounds, the molecules, that's when two things have to happen. Okay, and that's your solubility rules.
Okay, and those are your solubility rules. Okay, and those were numbered one through eight for us. Okay, every compound. Okay, this is all compounds all the time. So this could be a synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement. Um, not really combustion because those will be given to you, but you could figure out any single compound at all, any single one. Give me a second. Sorry. Um, so with this. Here's what we have to do. Um, and again, I'm going to assume you might have it out, you might not have it out. Um, but looking at something, for example, like NaCl or you know FeNO32, iron 2 nitrate, um, you could look at something like aluminum carbonate. Or you can look at something like um, CAF2. Okay, you can look at those. You can look at those. Going through, right, that solubility chart. Um, yeah, we probably definitely need to go over naming too. Um, with the solubility rules, right, they go in order. They go completely in order. So rule one is more important. Okay, rule one trumps rule two. Rule two trumps rule three, so on and so forth. So to be honest with you, I know for a fact sodium is an alkaline metal. And on your flow chart, right, that's going to be soluble instantly. Okay. And the one thing that we should talk about is that if it's soluble, what are you going to write in the parentheses? Everybody, type it in. What are you going to type? If it's soluble, what am I putting in the parentheses? Actually, if you want to add, if it's insoluble, what am I going to put in the parentheses? Okay, good. What about this one then? This one's aqueous. Because it dissolved. What about this guy? What about the insoluble ones? Yeah, insoluble, solid, 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 nice. Good, good. So that's going to be our help. Because all alkaline metals are soluble, this thing gets an AQ instantly. Also, rule four says that chlorines are soluble. So that works out really, really well in a way, which is a great thing, which is a great thing. Um, here, you'll notice rule two says nitrates are soluble. There are no irons on that solubility chart. Fe is not said anywhere on there, and you won't need it to be. One of the two things I'm going to give you in a compound is going to be on that chart, right? I'm not going to blindside you with two things not on the chart. That's not fair. So here, rule two is nitrate. Nitrates are soluble. Calcium fluoride. Calcium fluoride, calcium is really kind of not on there. There's a few exceptions at the bottom with it, but it does say fluorides are inside. That's rule four. And then this guy, carbonates are insoluble. And I believe that's rule five. I believe that's rule five. So that's where you look at those, okay? Again, solubility chart isn't just for telling double replacement reactions. You can do this with compounds every single time. Did that help, Jesus? No, Moises, Moises has that, sorry. Oh, good, okay, cool, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And again, like in the word problems too, like it might say, hey, this is, oh, by the way, um, soluble is aqueous. There are some other words, right? Let's let's quickly go through those. If it's aqueous, I can say acids, because acids break down in water, that's aqueous. I can say solution. I can say dissolved. Don't forget that it might just flat out say aqueous. I'm sorry, I know my hand writing is not the best at this angle. Practice will make perfect on that. Um, what colors? Uh, what what are you talking about for colors? I, I didn't forget about the naming question. That one's just gonna take a little bit longer.
think you guys are talking about this. Try that. Are you talking about like that kind of colors where like the rose? Red, black. Oh yeah, reds, yeah, reds, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Red's a gas. Black as solid. Blue liquid. White man made solid. Did that did answer it, Max? Okay, cool. Yep, that that's a good thing to know. Is uh, we good for naming, naming stuff? Sorry, my computer is making noises. I just want to be careful with it, obviously. Try that. See if that helps a little bit. Are we doing naming? Is naming next? Uh, what kind of naming did you guys want first? What kind of naming did you guys want first? Yeah, well, which one did you want first? There's three things we all went over with with naming. Which one's first? Because we're going to talk about all of them. It's just which one do you guys think is the one to talk about first? Acids first? Acids first. All right, we'll talk about acids first. Cool. Do, do, do. I just want to check to see if anyone's emailed me. Acids? Yeah, we can talk about that. So, with acid naming, okay, acids start with H. Okay, it's going to be H and then something. Okay, so that's going to be one of the really kind of cool things with that. Um, is it always starts with H. Acids always start with H by definition. Okay. So unlike ionic and covalent naming, right, that you can look and see, is this is this a metal? Is this a non-metal? You know, that's gonna be really helpful. And there's two types. Okay, there's binary and there's polyatomic. Okay. Both aren't too bad, but you don't want to mix them up, okay? P binary acids have two elements. Okay, H and something else, okay? Polyatomic acids have a polyatomic ion. Those are on the back of your periodic table. Okay, so it's going to be H and some polyatomic ion okay cool thing is first off you crisscross for all this okay this is crisscross all the time you always know the charge of hydrogen and you'll know the charge of everything else you'll know the charge of everything else um h2o is is water so that's that's not something i'm going to ask you water is not an acid water is neutral ph7 and that's because of the p uh the hoh Aspect. So don't worry about that one. Don't worry about the water being an acid thing. Um, here, okay, it's going to be the hydro. So it's going to be hydro something ic acid. So binary has the hydro, okay, and the polyatomic. If it ends with eight, the ending becomes ic. I ate it, and it was icky. And then Lily had that gray one as well. If it's ite at the end, you bit it or bite it, and it was delicious. 
So with these, not too bad, okay? And again, but you're gonna crisscross everything, okay? You're gonna crisscross all of this, okay? Every single time. All compounds crisscross all the time. Well, this is covalent, okay? Covalent has its own set of rules. So with this, like for example, like H, oops, H, ER, okay, is hydro, bromic acid, because it's hydro, bromine becomes bromic. And if you had like H2SO4, SO4 is sulfate, sulfate becomes sulfuric. And again, please note that I'm writing acid both times. You have to say acid. Yeah, there's no hydro here. There's no hydro. Ever. Because the second you say hydro, because you don't want to say hydrosulfuric, right? Hydrosulfuric is H2S. That doesn't work here. That doesn't work here. Yes. Yep. You're going to have that polyatomic there. Again, I, I'm hoping that the video quality is good. I have a pretty new laptop now. My old laptop was like from 2005. This I think is a 16, so I'm hoping you guys can see it because I know it's blurry on my screen. Can you see everything okay? It, it does look blurry. Like this kind of looks blurry on my end. Can you guys see it? Or am I just writing bad? Nah, not really. We we got back from Iowa, so everyone's a little bit tired. That was five hours of driving today before this. Um, are there any questions with asset naming? This is definitely something we could do tomorrow. This is definitely something we can practice tomorrow really quickly as well. So don't worry about like no examples right now. We could definitely do some more examples in class. What, what is, it, is this good with acid naming? Do you guys want to do covalent or ionic now? Do you guys want to, uh, which one first, ionic or covalent? Up to you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna post the video um, directly to YouTube after this. The second I'm done, I'm posting this to YouTube, so you can watch this five times if you wanted. Yeah. So yeah, don't worry, Aileen. You can definitely do that tomorrow. Absolutely. And if not, I'll have the file and I'll I'll get it done in class even if I have to. Oh no problem, no problem. I understand some people can't make it or can only stay for a little bit. Yeah. So it'll be up. It'll be up and I'll post on Twitter uh, when it is. But this should be posted by definitely 7.15. Not a, not a problem. Ionic? Ionic. I'm going to race. All right. All right. Ionic naming. Oop. Let me move a little bit. Okay, so it's ionic. That's too high. Okay, ionic naming, as we know, it's a metal plus a non-metal, okay? That's the most important thing. Metals mean ionic, okay? Definitely cool. His arm looks like a noodle.
Um, so it's got to be, it's got to be that. Okay. If it's not a metal first, it's not ionic. Okay. First thing, big thing. Okay. Ionic. Every time we crisscross. Okay. All the time. Okay. All the time. Okay. I don't care how cringy it is. Deal with it. Um, so what you guys signed up for, um, always crisscross with these. Okay. You will know the charges. Okay. Not a big deal. You might have to figure a few out. Okay. I'm not going to lie to you. You might have to figure a few out, but it's not that bad. Okay. So ionic, I break it into three things. Okay. Three things. And we talked about these three things. Um, and I'm just going to erase this. I'm going to put it right here. A little bit better placement for that. Okay. Three types. Okay. Phase one. Okay, this is a S block metal. Plus a non metal. Okay, what I call phase two. Okay, is anything. Okay, it's got to be a metal though, of course. Plus a polyatomic. Ion, okay. Those are on the back of your periodic table, okay. Just as a reminder, they're on the back. You don't see it on the front. Flip it. There it is. And we, people were doing a little bit better with toward the end. Phase three, which is a transition metal plus anything. And by anything, I mean it's going to be a non-metal slash. It's going to be a polyatomic ion. Okay. Those things are definitely important. Okay. They're definitely, definitely, definitely um, important. Um, so I did want to take a few seconds just to talk about that. Um, I wanted to spend maybe a little time talking about like uh, one and two together. Really quickly, like I erase this and talk about one and two, and then I erase that and talk about three separately. Is that okay? Crisscross. <laughs> yep. That, I mean, that's kind of how it is. Um, but I was going to kind of do that. So I was going to group these two together. Is that okay? Talk about these two and then talk about that one. Um, I was gonna ask, do you want to I was gonna give some examples of these two. And then I was gonna do an example of this guy kind of separately. So I was gonna like do these two in in one and then do this a little bit. Is that okay? Because these two go together better than than these. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. Cool. All right, so I'm gonna erase all this. So we're gonna talk about the first two, okay? They they go really well together. They go really well together. So with this, okay, we might have something like this. Okay, we might have Na2SO3, or we might have something like this. We could have, say, calcium nitride. Okay, first and foremost, as a reminder, elements end with ide. Okay. So the fact that this says nitride means that this thing is definitely going to be nitrogen. And we know nitrogen has a minus three charge. That's going to help us with that crisscross. Okay. Calcium is Ca to plus two. Again, I know that because I, I know that. And you guys know that too. And if you don't know, do you have a periodic table where you should have that information? Okay. This guy, crisscross. Okay. Type it in. What's the answer? And don't worry about doing like subscripts. Just type it in. What's the answer for this? If you crisscross CA plus two with N minus three, what's that going to be? Type that in. And I'll get some juice.
Okay, one person has it. Does anyone agree with that? Is that right or wrong? I don't know. Anyone else have an answer? You can't agree with yourself. All right, cool. Good. That's correct. It's going to be CA, three, and two. CA, three, and two. And that's it with these, okay? Also, the polyatomics, same kind of thing, okay? If I do calcium, and let's say this time I do carbonate, right? Carbonate doesn't end with I, so it's on the back, okay? Calcium's a plus two. Carbonate is CO3 minus two. When you crisscross these out, it's going to be CA2, CO3, two. Okay, again, crisscrossing, making sure my parentheses around those. Okay, you don't want it looking like 32. You don't want it looking like 32. Again, don't forget that you can reduce those twos. Okay, so the rules still work even with the polyatomics. Okay, but again, parentheses, you don't want it looking like 32 or 41 or whatever it ends up being, and reduce. They do cancel. Yep, they do cancel out, and that's, and that's what I did here. You got a one and a one now. Yes, they will. Yep. So yeah, you were no, you're good. You were good. You were you were one step ahead of me on that one, which is good. Which is good. And again, three three cancels, two six cancel, two four cancel. You kind of know what cancels. Um, are we? Are is that okay on these guys? This way is that okay? And if it's not, that's okay. We have time in class. Okay, we do have time in class. Maybe means always a really good thing to talk about. Especially, like, it's always going to be there. Thanks. All right, I think we'll go to these. What's NA? Type it in. What's NA? What's this? What's it? Actually, yeah, what's this? Tell me what this is. Tell me what NA is. What is this stuff? What is the answer for this? Yeah, you guys tell me. I give up. You guys tell me. When I come back, I better see answers. I want to see answers. I want to see answers. What's that? All right, let's see if I have answers. I better have answers. <laughs> Sodium dicarbonate. Carbonate? What? That's not dicar that's not carbonate. Let's check it out though. So here, that's sodium. And this SO3 is sulfite. Except Chewy, you decided to spell it like you were in England, so or Germany. That said they would spell it there. But yeah, it's sulfite. Okay. Uh carbonate is CO3. That this is SO3. So maybe you accidentally didn't see the S. That might be my fault. It's all good. Yeah, sodium sulfide. There's some different names in here. I don't recognize some of these things. Yep. Sulfide, good. 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 If you see a few people I don't think I know. I have no idea who that person is. 
Welcome, welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. It's all good, all good, all good. The thing I'm more concerned with is there's no prefixes on ionics. Let's write that down. That's a really good, that's a really good remember. There's no prefixes. The only prefixes you're going to see is like uh, chromate. That's the only time. Only time you'll see it. Oh, what up? How you doing? Yo, Jimmy Johns, that's uh, the founder graduated from the high school in my hometown. Did you know that? Fun fact. Jimmy Johns graduated from my high school in my hometown. So fun fact about that. Yeah. Whoa. Cool. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. Amazing. Stupendous. Let's do another one. So with this one, let's do ALP. What's ALP? Type it in. What's ALP? What is this? What is this? Tell me. Did he get replaced? I don't know. Uh, sweet. Got one. Want to see what people think. Sweet. 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 I'm trying to get him. Yep, yep, yep. Good. Good. Yep. AL is aluminum. And P is phosphide. It is aluminum phosphide. It is aluminum phosphide. Very good. So again, elements end with ide. If not, it's on the back, and you just say it, right? If it's sulfide, just write sulfide. Don't worry about that. Okay. Again, use those tricks. Okay. And again, find those patterns. If you find the patterns, that will make things much easier. And if it makes it much easier, well, look how quickly we just did these four. Okay. Look how quickly we just did these four. And that's going to help you not only on any naming stuff that's on the final, but anything that's reaction based word problems, right? Or second semester. Oh, someone just liked it? Well, that's a shame. Where's the, uh, I don't see anybody unliking it. I got a thumbs up. No one disliked this. I don't think anyone did. I don't know. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care at all. I don't care at all. Well, that's sad. Two people thumbs down? Oh, no. Nah. It's probably be... Oh, geez. No, don't don't worry about that. It, it literally could be for... It could be random people for the potato quality of this live stream. No, I'm not going to dab on them. I'm not going to dab on them. Oh, good. You guys are nuts. Yeah, what, uh, is, are we good on this? Do you want, can we go to phase three? Can we do three? Are we going to go for the other one? All right, phase three. I'm going to race this in three, two, one. Phase three. Phase three is when you have a transition metal. Okay. You guys know where those are. Trans metal. Okay. That's going to be in three through 12. Okay. For your groups. Three through 12. Okay. Three through 12. Um, what happens here, right? They don't have a set charge. Okay. Balance. Electrons change. Equals no set charge. So it's not like you can say, oh, these are plus three. These are plus four. These are plus two. These are plus one. These are negative. It's not going to work. Okay. It's not going to work. What up? What up? What up? Welcome. Um, so with this, right, 
you're going to have hints. Okay, so for example, something like this. Oops. Nickel, parentheses, three, and parentheses, chloride. But you might also have, right, nickel, parentheses, two, and let's say cyanide. Oh, yeah. Cyanide, okay? So nickel can be three, positive. Nickel can be two, positive. It's going to change. It's going to change. It's going to change. So what you can do is, you know, right, and I don't know if this is going to show up in this color, but I'll try it. You know that this Roman numeral has to tell you the charge of the nickel, because nickel can change. Nickel can change. Oop. I got a lot blurry. Is it is it better? Joseph Rez. <laughs> Mr. Taylor versus T series. Am I right? Am I right? Is that better? Is this better? Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, sweet. Okay, again, yeah, thank you guys for dealing with that. Like, this isn't where I thought I would be doing this, um, so I'm kind of just going with it. More to the, more to the right? Um, my, okay, so my right is this. Are you saying that? Is that better? Okay, I'll keep going then. I'll keep going. So we know this. So we know that nickel is plus three here. Chlorine's minus one. We know that already. Nickel in this one is plus two. Cyanide is minus one. We know this from the back side. So when you do that crisscross, you're going to get NiCl3, and this one, you're going to get Ni, again, put it in parentheses. You don't want it looking like N2 without anything with the C. And that's where you crisscross that. So again, we're still crisscrossing, um, not, not anything different there, not anything different there. Are, are those okay? Is it okay? Because I'm, I'm hoping that the ones with the Roman numerals are fine. Like, it's normal crisscross problem. Just know this always goes with the metal. Is that okay, that part? Oh, I say hey. Tell him I say hey. Is everybody else okay? Abby, Moises, Chewy, Emma, Jose. Nuvi, I think you're still here. Senior Broccoli. Are we okay with those? Okay. Oh, crack a lack. Okay. Wait. Yes, Elizabeth. Oh, hey, Liz. Yeah, Elizabeth, I'm waiting. Yeah, I can do one more example. Yeah, we got this. Um, I'm going to raise this top one just because I'm wondering if the middle is good. So I'm just going to raise this one. So this one, um, Elizabeth, give me a transition medal. Elizabeth, you give me a transition medal. Nah, boring. We'll, Elizabeth, give me one.
Mercury. Okay, we got Mercury. All right, so with Mercury, okay, Mercury is kind of a special one, uh, which we haven't talked about a lot. Um, Mercury has a tendency of being uh, one or two only. Okay, so it's kind of cool with that. Uh, for the sake of this, I'm just going to pick one. Okay. Um, so you are... What? Yep. Oh, that's a U. Sorry if that didn't look like a U. Um, so that's kind of a cool thing about Mercury. Um, no, you, you're all good. Bye, Emma. And a matter of fact... We're going to say Mercury 1 sulfate, okay? So with Mercury 1 sulfate, Hg is Mercury. It's going to be a plus 1. Sulfate is SO4 minus 2. So the cool thing about this one is just like anything else, we can crisscross that, and what will happen is it will be Hg 2. Right, because that two is going to come from the sulfate. And if you wanted to, you could put the SO4 in parentheses and you could leave it blank like this. You could put the one, okay, because that one from Mercury is going to cross over. Again, I'm, I'm doing that over here. Um, or you could just say H2SO4. Um, if you're not comfortable with this, I recommend always putting these guys in parentheses and put the one. I mean, it's right. So mercury one sulfate, H2, SO4. Oh, don't worry about getting your periodic table. No big deal. Did that help Elizabeth? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. I just want to make sure this was good first. Uh, is, is, is this okay? Going this way? That's good. And then a few, I'm guessing, because a few of you already said good, I'm, I'm going to get rid of it in a few seconds. Noodle. All right. Next, let's talk about the other ones, okay? Let's say that I have cobalt chloride. Okay, I purposely didn't say something there. And let's say we have FeC2H3O2, and I put a 2 there. Okay. With these, okay. Going the other way around, the key thing is, yes, you can. I don't mind being called that. Um, the key thing is we need to know that this is a transition metal and that iron is a transition metal. For that reason, we need to make sure that we do know the charge of this and we know the charge of this. But we have to make sure we know where it's coming from. So in this case, we know it's cobalt. I put the you know, Roman numerals blank. And I know that that's chloride. So I would do that at the very beginning. Here, I know that this is iron. I know that it's a transition metal. So I'm going to put the parentheses for the Roman numeral. And I know that C2H3O2. What is C2H3O2? What is C2H3O2? What is C two H three O two? Okay, I didn't know who Mr. Noodle was, but now I know. I just looked it up. Acetate. It's acetate. It's acetate. Good. So I'm just gonna write out acetate. So the cool part about this is, is it's gonna be, it's gonna be the crisscross, right? So this was crisscrossed already. And we don't know this or this. So the cool thing is, if you crisscross right, this cobalt ended up over here. So in this case, if this was crisscrossed, 
This three came from that cobalt. So this is cobalt three. And if you're crisscrossing, where did that two come from? That two came from the iron. So it is cobalt three chloride and iron two acetate. So to look at the charges, you just need to look at that last thing. You know that that's minus one. There's an invisible one. You know this is minus one. And again, there's an invisible one. So these were crisscrossed, and you're good to go there. So what these, the secret is, look at that last number. Think about that crisscross. If it was, oh. So that one, that one's kind of a little weird. Um, so if it was CON3, okay, it would be cobalt nitride. The only problem with this one, Elizabeth, is nitride is a minus three. And you can see there's no three there. So this thing had to be reduced. So I, this one would actually be cobalt nine, which is impossible. So don't worry about that. But for what you were asking, it would have been cobalt three nitride. But that one's a little, that one's a little bit more difficult than anything I give you. There wouldn't be anything like that on the test. Nothing like that. Okay, I'm going to give you guys one. Okay, you guys type in your answer on this. You guys have parentheses. Try this one, okay? I'm going to give you guys this. We're going to go with... How do I want to do this for you? Let's go this. CR... Three P O four four. What's this? C R three P O four four. Take a second. What's that going to be? What's that going to be? Sorry, didn't mean to distract. So it looks like you guys are saying the same thing as you guys can see. Chromium for phosphate. And I am here to tell you that that. is correct. That is correct. Chromium, got that four charged from there with the crisscross. Phosphate is minus three, which is where that three came from. It is chromium four phosphate. And if you can do that one, to be honest, you can do all of ionic naming. Not a problem at all. Okay, if you can do that one, you're safe. Like, in all honesty, with ionic naming. You can do that, you're good to go. Did, did that help on ionic naming? Sweet. Yeah, naming, that, that's a great thing to talk about tonight, is naming. It's a great thing. Peace. Um, so, what's next? What's next? What is next?
But what else would you guys like? What else could I do? What else could I do? Ooh, cations and anions? Yes. Yes, we could. All right, I'm erasing this. Huh, look. No, look. Now I'm lost. Where am I? Sweet. All right, cations and anions. That's a really cool thing to talk about. Um... First and foremost, oh, that didn't erase everything at all. <laughs> so um, ions have a charge, right? Um, cations. Cations are the positive ones. Okay, these are your metals. And anions are negative. These are your non-metals. So here's my question to you. If these, right, are positive, are they gaining or losing electrons? And if anions, are they gaining or losing electrons? So, question is here. These are positive, cations, cats have paws. Meow, 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 meow. Right, positive things. Anions, anti, anti, kind of sounds like negative. Do these gain or do these gain? Which one gains? Yeah, and, and this is why you ask a really question. Because it is a little weird, right? It is a little weird. It is a little weird. Um, and it seems like everyone's doing pretty good with it. Um, it is crazy. It is random. But because electrons are negative, when you gain an electron, you're now more negative. Because if I give you a negative, you're negative. So these guys are the ones that actually gain and these guys actually lose. So that's a great thing that you asked that today. Because that's definitely something that people sometimes switch. But these are the ones that lose. So one way to check, too, is calcium, right? Calcium. Calcium plus two has 18 electrons. 18 is a noble gas. 18 looks like argon. That's stable. Here, if you had N minus three, that. Right. That thing has 10 electrons. Stable noble gas. If you would flip it, if you did N minus 3, and you did 4 electrons? That's not stable. That's beryllium. That's weird. And if you have calcium plus 2, and that has 22 electrons? That's titanium. That's not stable either. It's got to look like a noble gas. It's got to look like a noble gas. So again, wants to be stable. Smiley face. Just like the noble gases. I got no email. I got no email. Can't do a live reaction if I got no email. I got no email. Can't do a live reaction if I got no email. So you can always check. You can always check with this like little trick. And if it's not a noble gas, if it doesn't match 210, 18, 36, 54, something's up. Something's up. Something's up.
No, but that's that's a great that's a great question, Sari. That really is. Because that that is something people goof every year. And this I think will stop some of some of you here from doing that. And that's awesome. That's a great question. Good. 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 What's next? What is what is next? What is next? Ooh. What do you guys want? Do you want periodic trends or do you want electron configurations? Trends, trends, trends one, <coughs> trends one. Let's try uh, configuration next. Lily, is that you? Is who's who's the duck person? Is that Lily? I think it's Lily. Lily knows German. Elizabeth, your thing's not opening, so I don't know what it is. Periodic trends, okay? I don't know. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, so, with this, with this. Um, sad. Yeah, periodic trends, we can do that for sure. Uh, with periodic trends, right, we got atomic radius. I'm just going to abbreviate freeze. Um, ionization energy and electronegativity, okay? This is related to the size of the atom. This is ability Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. It's okay. Sorry. Um ability to uh defend it's um, electrons and electronegativity is ability. Shh. Okay. Wow, I hope you guys didn't hear that. Um, ability to attract um, electrons. Okay, so this is kind of the shield that we've talked about. This one's a little bit of the sword. Okay, so that's kind of where it goes. So that's kind of what these guys are, okay? In terms of the trends, okay, um, I think the definitions are easy enough, right? It's explaining what happens as you go up, down, left, right on the periodic table, okay? So to do that, here's what we're going to do, okay? Here's the periodic table. Not perfect, but we'll go with it, okay? Not perfect, but we'll go with it. Essentially what happens here, okay? And I'm going to do a general trend. I'm not going to draw all those arrows and stuff and try to confuse people. Here in this bottom corner, okay, this stuff is huge. This stuff is not. Okay, I don't even know if you guys can see this dot I made. I don't even know if you can see that, okay? This stuff is small. This stuff is huge. Okay? So going this way, it gets smaller. Which means these have low ionization energies. Low electronegativities. And that means that these guys have extremely high ionization energies and very high electronegativities. Okay. And that's really what it comes down to, okay? Again, as you go up, down, left, and right on the periodic table, those are the trends. But the big trend is this is huge. These are small, okay? And the reason is, right, as you go down, there's more shells. 
And again, I'm not going to draw a bunch of them. And again, you can imagine, right? More shells, more levels. Okay, remember, and again, I know I haven't done it yet. I probably should do it tomorrow. If you wear all these coats, right, you're going to get really, really big. Okay, I'll do, I will do that tomorrow. I will wear the coats tomorrow. Someone remind me, I will wear the coats tomorrow. Um, and here, as you go left to right, okay, there's more protons, so there's more pull. And again, when there's more pull, it's brought into you, right? Like lithium, I could pull like this. Kind of close to my face, kind of not. Fluorine can pull all the way over here. Fluorine is strong, so it can pull that electron all the way up. That's going to help with that. Okay. Um, does that make some sense for radius? Is that is that okay with radius? Is that okay with radius? Hey, welcome, welcome. What is this? What is this? What is this photo, Elizabeth? What is that? What about? What is that? That's wild. Just popped up on my screen, too. Now look at this. It's me. It looks like me? It looks like I'm Sinestro. We was a Green Lantern <laughs> from the Green Lantern movie. Yeah, is radius good? Is radius good? So again, more shells going down, more protons, more pull. And as that happens, obviously it's going to get brought in. A little pull versus a lot of pull. Are we good on radius? Are we good on radius? Cool, cool, cool. All right, we'll go on to the other two, okay? Now for this, I'm just gonna erase this for some ease, okay? Let's not worry about that right now. Let's focus on 100% on the size component, okay? Size explains everything, okay? If you know size, you could do great with everything. So really what it comes down to, right? If you're really, really, really big, okay, like these guys, or if you're comparing atoms, the bigger atom, the electrons are further away. And if the electrons are further away from the atoms, they can't defend themselves as much, okay? So to be honest with you, right? I'm right by my phone right now, okay? I'm right by my phone. If my wife tried to come over and take my phone right now, she couldn't because I have my phone in my hand, okay? Could you take my phone from my hand right now? The answer is no, okay? There's no way that she can do that, okay? But if she tries to, say, take my aluminum foil, which she's doing right now, I can't stop her because I am way too far away from the aluminum foil. I am here. She's over there. Not going to work, right? So if you're close to something and you have a small radius, that's why you have a high ionization energy. You're able to defend yourself because you're close to it. No one's going to take this from me right now. No one. No one can take my markers or my eraser either. I'm right here. But someone tried to take my shoes, which are way over there. Or someone tried to take my, my, um, my mug. I'm too far away. Or if anyone tried to take a pillow, I'm too far away. And that's the secret with ionization energy, right? The bigger you are, you can't defend yourself. You're too big. Can't defend yourself if you're too big. You can't get that attraction. Another way to think about it as well is this. These guys are trying to lose electrons. They're not going to defend themselves. Positive things lose. The negative stuff's over here. These guys are trying to lose electrons. These guys are trying to gain. So two ways you can think about it, actually. Size or charge. These guys, really big, can't defend themselves, too big. Really small, can defend themselves, small. Electrons are close enough to be able to defend. Or this stuff over here is trying to lose electrons. You're not defending. These guys are trying to gain. 
So if they're trying to gain electrons, you bet they're not trying to lose any. What's the point of gaining some if you're going to lose some? Makes no sense. Are we okay with ionization energy? That's that should be better. Yeah, just a little bit. All right. Okay, so electronegativity now. Electronegativity. Electronegativity, same kind of thing. Actually, honestly, the same thing. If you're really big, you can't reach out and grab things. I can't go grab my my shoes right now. They're too far away. I can't grab the foil. It's too far away. I can't grab the mug. It's too far away. I can't grab the pillow. It's too far away. But what I can grab, I can grab these because they're close to me. Okay, I can grab this because it's close to me. I can grab my little wipe in case. I can grab my phone. I have a board game. I can grab this. Okay. You guys have noticed I've been drinking something. Okay. I have my mango tea. I can grab that. But I mean, there's a lot of stuff I can't grab. Okay. There's a lot of things I can't grab. Like, to be honest with you, right? There. See that plant? I can't reach that. It's too far. So that's a low electronegativity. I cannot grab that. I'm not close enough to it. But these I can because I am close to it. Okay. So again, based on size. And the other thing, obviously, as well, is these are trying to lose. Again, same thing, right? If these are trying to lose, they're not trying to gain. These want to lose electrons. And these are actually flat out trying to gain electrons. And if you're gaining electrons, you better believe. You better believe you have a high electronegativity. So if you like the size, you could totally do well on the test with that. If you want to talk about radius and stuff, we could talk about that as well. Okay. So same kind of thing. Up. Elizabeth, I will cancel this stream. Watch what you say. I will cancel the stream. I will just hang up on y'all. Why, thank you. My wife gets 85% of the credit for that. I twisted to show them the tree as an example. And they're like, you have a lovely home. Yep. Scarves. Those are from Alaska. Is, is, does, is that okay with the trends? Because that actually should have been the end of it. You've done a great job. You've done a great job. What? You've done a great job. What? Everything. I know. Yeah, is, trend, is trends better? That was unit f uh, four. Not three, technically. Three. The trends are one of the harder things, I think, on the test because it's easy to flip little things. You have to explain, and that can be a little hard. Do you guys want to do electron configuration now? Is it electron configuration time? Yeah, this is electron configuration time. All right, cool. I'm going to erase this in a little bit, maybe a few seconds. Okay. All right, cool. So electron configurations, okay. Okay, electron configurations is like the barcode for different elements, okay. Um, and if you would allow me, because I know you probably don't have this in front of you. Um, I'm going to see if I can send you guys 
an image to look at while I'm talking with you. We'll try. I don't know if I can do this. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I don't know if I can do that. I'm going to try something. I don't know if it worked. Did it work? I'm going to try one more time. Okay, okay. Let's try. Well, sorry about that. That I tried to send you guys an electron configuration chart. This is a bigger link, but if you, this should be images of them, so you can pick whatever. Oh no, it's literally okay. Search if you want to go to Google, and you can literally search um, electron configuration chart. And I'm sorry, it's literally like two characters too big. It's literally two characters too big. I don't think I can like share the screen with you. I'm gonna let me look for a second to see if I can. Switch the screw. I don't think I can do that. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to do that. Okay, so with electron configurations, um, there's that barcode. Okay, essentially to save some time, I'm just gonna kind of draw it. Okay, S. Again, not to proportion. Okay, we have that. Okay, S P D and F. Okay, totally not to proportion. That's a horrible table. I'm sorry. Um, but there's a barcode with it. Okay. And essentially, when you have an element, okay, you need to essentially tell your reader where the electrons are. Do we know where electrons are? Can any of you tell me where electrons are? Where are electrons? Okay, one person says I can't. No, no. Can you? No, you can't, right? Too small, too fast, okay? It's like trying to catch a fly. You might be able to catch one fly, but you're probably not catching any others, okay? They're always moving too fast and they're too small. Excellent, excellent. So with these, all you have to do is kind of do that barcode. Again, you have a 1S zone, a 2S zone, a 3S zone, a 4S zone. And you guys know, obviously, it starts a little weird in the D block. It's going to be three, four, five. This is a 1S. You're going to have a 2P, a 3P, a 4P. Uh, I'll be honest with you, the F block is not on the final. Scribble that out. Never mind. Let's erase it. Um, and honestly, you're just going to start at the top 1S, and you're just going to label your way through it. A frog can. Frog can find electrons. Um, so for the barcode. So if you have a barcode, okay, if we're doing a barcode for something like, oh, phosphorus, right? Phosphorus is element 15. The coding is going to start out with 1s2, 2s2, 3s2, sorry, 3, oh, <laughs> it's been a while, uh, 2p6, my bad, my bad on that, sorry, back. 2p6, 3s2, right, and then 3p3. So essentially, six, one, two, and then one, two, three, because phosphorus is right in the middle of that p block. That is a chart you're allowed to use. Okay, you are allowed to use a chart. If okay, I really wish I could send you this, so you could kind of see it and know like it's allowed. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try something else. This might, yeah, it's not gonna work. Um, yeah, 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 Liz, yeah, definitely. That's definitely part of it. Yeah, I am gonna uh, print a big one for you guys, so you don't have to have like forty thousand little pieces of paper. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, but I don't, I don't honestly, like being honest, Max, I don't know anything about those. So it would take me too long to even try to figure it out. 
But I think we got it right. And now wait a check, right? Two plus two plus six plus two plus two is 15. And element 15 is phosphorus. Noble gas wise, the noble gas before phosphorus is neon. After neon is the three S range. And then you can just finish it like that as well. But no, that don't, that might be something I should look into. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna learn. I'm gonna learn. I'm learning. Aren't you proud of me? How to up oh, didn't work. Never mind, not learning anything. Is is that is that okay? That that normally goes pretty well. I'm not I'm not I don't want to waste time on that if we're good. Are there any questions with electron configurations or, or noble gas electron configurations? Because noble gas is fair game, obviously. I'm electronegative. I'm also ionic, so I took it. Do you want some? Okay. Then I'm staying ionic. All right. If we're good on that, what's next? What's next? We got 13 minutes. I do apologize. I, I was, I'm honestly wiped out with the driving and stuff. I was going to try to stay a little longer, but, um, I think seven needs to be what happens tonight. I'm sorry. We still got 13 minutes. What can I help with? 13 minutes is good, good stuff. We can get a few things in. Isn't it crazy how quickly time goes sometimes? I feel like it blinked. Alfbau. Oh, you're talking about like Alfbau, Pauli, and and Hun's rule. Yeah, we could do that tomorrow. We could do it now, Max, too, if you want to do. Are you talking about those three? The orbital diagram rules. We could do that. Uh, Abby, uh, we'll do chemical reactions in class tomorrow. Let's do that tomorrow with everybody, um, because that'll be the most beneficial, um. We'll, if there's a little time, I'll, I'll start it for sure. Um, yeah, let's go over those three rules right now. And then we'll do chemical reactions next if there's time. Um, also, even if I go over chemical reactions, if there's time, ask it again tomorrow. Ask it again tomorrow, okay? That's definitely something we can work with. Sweet. Orbital diagrams. Wow. Oh, that was way too high. Mm. Let's see. Can I put a marker under my computer and erase it? Mm. Problem solving, guys. Nice. There we go. <laughs> there we go. So there are uh, a few, um, a few different rules. A few different rules. Um, one. That's the Drake rule. Okay, starting from the bottom, now we're here. Okay, that's off bow. Okay, off bow. Okay, start at the bottom. And we work our way up. Okay, so we can't start here. We can't start here. We can't start here, here, here. It's got to be here. It's got to be there. It's got to be there. Next rule, Polly. Pauli says two electrons fit in each orbital. 
And again, this is very similar to electron configurations where we're talking about where electrons generally are. Not 100%, but generally. We can at least say that. Um, you may describe the rules. You may describe the rules, Elizabeth. That's a great question. You may describe them. Okay. On the test, too, for that unit, I also was a little nice about grading it, too. If you know the rules, that's more important than... That's more important than being than knowing which one's which, okay? Um, if that helps. Again, two electrons per orbital, opposite spin, okay? And again, that opposite spin is when the arrows are in different directions or those half arrows, okay? Again, electrons. Remember in class where I had those two bales, the two whoosh bottles kind of, and I kind of rolled them around? If they're together and they're not repelling, electrons want to repel, right? They have, you know, two negative things. Yee, <laughs> gotta, gotta go, right? Gotta go. It's only when you have a positive with a negative that they attract. Okay, so it's gotta be opposite or else that's not gonna work. And then the last one, Hun's rule. And that's the creep. Okay, that's the creeper. Okay, and that says empty orbitals first. Okay, then you can double back. So if we're doing the orbital diagram, say for nitrogen, okay, nitrogen is number seven. First one, up or down, doesn't matter. Second one has to be the opposite, so I went up, down. Second, oh, sorry, third and fourth, up, down. Fifth one, up. I have to go to one of these two next, okay? So for funsies, I'm going to go there next. That's six electrons. And the seventh one has to go in the middle. And those are all three of the rules. Starting from the bottom while we're here, two electrons per, opposite spins. And you got to go up, 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 and then down, down, down. Or, you know, however you want to do that, okay? You got to go to empty ones first and double up, okay? You're not going to go to a restaurant and sit with strangers. Electrons aren't going to play that game either. Does, does that help? That's a good one. That's a good quick one. I could definitely talk about the basics of the reactions for sure. Is that good? Yeah, it is useful to know which is which. It will help. Bitta. All right, chemical reactions. Chemical reactions. Chemical reaction. Chemical reaction. Hey, and imagine what you'll feel after, you know, I do review sessions tomorrow, tomorrow until 7 o'clock, Tuesday till 8 o'clock. You were, we're all going to be ready to go. This is going to be a great final. And you guys will be ready for Tuesday. Uh, chemical reactions. Um... Because uh, we are a little low on time. Um, Abby, which part of it did you want me to talk about? Um, do you want me to talk about the types, predicting products? Um, I did talk about the uh, states of matter thing, but I could definitely go over it again really quick. Um, which part would you like? Start on Monday? Oh, um, all teachers have to be after school um, until 4.15 on Monday. So honestly, right after school tomorrow. And I'm staying till 7. So if you guys want to go to other classes first, go. So yeah, if you need to go to talk to Salazar until 4.15 or so, do it, and I'll be there at the end. Seriously, you want to go talk to Kaler first? Go talk to Kaler first. I'll, I will wait. Say it's a matter, you got it.
Uh, with states of matter, excellent question. Um, elements versus compound. Um, and Abby, again, if this, if I'm going a little fast or anything, um, this is also the first thing or second thing we talked about at the beginning of this video. So when I post this, it's on twice. So if you didn't like this part, maybe watch the beginning for a little bit. Um, and that's going to be elements and compounds. Um, with elements, you just got to look at the periodic table. With the compounds, that's the solubility rules. And that is allowed on your final. Okay, that's that uh, little half sheet. Definitely given to you. Definitely given to you. Um, so with solubility rules, with the compounds, right, it's going to be that rule like one through eight. Again, as we knew, rule one beats rule two, two beats three. They go kind of in order. Okay, so there will be something from the, each compound that I give you on that cheat sheet. I had a great question. Um, I believe it was after school. I believe it was after school where someone asked me, like, what happens if we get two things that are not on the solubility rules chart? They said, like, iron and chromate. Because chromate's not on there. Iron's not on there. You won't know the answer. Okay, because I didn't put chromate on there. So every single one that you get will be on the solubility chart. Um, and again, when doing those, right, it's either going to be soluble or insoluble. Soluble means it's aqueous, it dissolves. If it's insoluble, okay, that's going to be solid. That's going to be solid. Because again, it didn't dissolve. Like you're insoluble. You do not dissolve in water. This pen does not dissolve in water. My phone does not dissolve in water. This coffee thing, candle, that doesn't dissolve in water, okay? <laughs> that smells horrible. Why do you have a coffee candle? You don't eat candles? Do you eat candles? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oops. Oof. Um, so when looking at that, right, you might have something like, um, no, I already did that one. Let me do a different one. Um, you might have something like nickel's not on there. Nickel is not on your chart, but oxygen is. And I'm pretty sure it's rule five, but rule five says that oxides are insoluble. So this guy's going to be a solid because oxides are soluble. Uh, where's this bath and body works? My students are obsessed with your coffee candle. I should bring it in tomorrow. It's not, it's not right. It smells like toffee. It smells like, it smells like toffee. Oh. And then it smells like coffee. Mm. Oof. Or you can you might have something like this. You could have something like K three P O four. But again, because all alkali metals are soluble, this is going to be aqueous. That's rule one, because this one's an alkali metal. Coffee is bad. Yes, thank you. What? Princess Soleil says coffee is bad. It's, it's not a lie. They're right. Plus one. Okay. How about some tea candle and said, I know I like tea. I'm about tea. Teas. I have so much fancy tea in there, you don't even understand. I got blueberry muffin tea. I got pumpkin tea. I got crazy tea. Don't I have crazy tea? Yep. yep. Coffee is not coffee is great. Uh. All righty. Um, we're going to talk about this a little bit more tomorrow. It is seven o'clock, so I am going to get going. Um, I hope this was helpful a little bit. You got peanut butter chocolate tea. I do not have peanut butter chocolate tea. No. Um. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, so Max, I was just going to try to show like a picture of that cheat sheet you guys have. So, yeah, it'll be bring some tomorrow. Oh, no. Oh, boy. No, I have my own tea. I'm not giving anyone my tea. It's my tea. Um, uh, okay, I'm going to get out of here before. Um, you guys have a good one. Um, Come with questions tomorrow, okay? I'm going to post this video. Um, I'm going to try to do timestamps. I might get lazy and not do it. Um, but seriously, this was a good session. Go from there.
Um, thank you guys all for coming. Um, and I'm going to post this right now. Okay. So if you guys don't see a link within 15 minutes, something is up. Okay. Hope you guys have a good one. Um, peace road, bro. Should I get some Taylor? Should I get some tater tots and just throw them at the screen? Oof. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>